Congratulations on the purchase of your new Ryobi 10-inch portable table saw with quick stand. I know this would be a great addition to your shop and you will get a lot of use out of it. You know, there's more to setting up your table saw than just taking it out of the box and plugging it in. You want to ensure that it was assembled correctly at the factory and that it wasn't damaged during shipping. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of inspecting your new Ryobi RTS 21G portable table saw as well as setting it up correctly so you're ready to start working safely and effectively on your projects. If you haven't already done so, let me show you how to take this out of the box. So you see this one edge or this one side and the way it's oriented, you want to take it out through that side. And I'm going to show you how that's oriented in just a second when I take the whole thing out. The reason you want to do that is much easier to unpack and do some of the other things that I'm going to show you. So let me show you what that looks like unpacked. As you can see, I pulled the contents out of the box and you notice it's oriented in such a fashion that it's very easy to unpack from this point of view. Notice also that very, very sharp blade is not protected, so be very careful while you're underneath there. And then on this side, you see that cross member there? You can pull on that to pull it out of the box without any difficulties, okay? But over on this side, these are the legs to the quick stand. They are not taped in or held in place by anything. So as you're pulling it out of the box, you need to be careful that these don't fall over on your toes or hurt someone. Not a bad idea to have someone help you at that point. So that's how the box should be oriented as you're pulling it out. If it's not, then flip the box over and get it oriented correctly before you pull it out or the contents are going to fall all over the place. While you have your table saw upside down, you want to take out this piece of styrofoam. So you, you can do this while it's still in the box. But also I want to point out that blade is very, very sharp. So be very careful while you're underneath here. So what you basically need to do is make sure that the bevel lock is unlocked, just as I've pushed it down there. And then you want to grab the motor, being careful not to get close to the blade. Tip the motor over carefully. And then take that piece of star packing styrofoam out of there. Set it aside. And then what you can do is tilt the motor back. Again, watching out for that blade. And then flip the be bevel lock back into place. Before you get started on assembly, you want to make sure you have all the parts. So let's do a quick inventory. You want to make sure you have the operator's manual plus the yellow uh, power switch key. And then, of course, you have your fence. Two wrenches for removing the blade. Your blade guard. Anti-kickback pause. Miter gauge, and then all the little pieces you're going to need for your bevel control knob and the fence control indicator and an Allen wrench, and of course your push stick, and then all the parts or components of your quick stand. So these are all the components you're going to need to set up your table saw. So I'll do a quick inventory of all your parts, and uh, I'm going to move on to the tools that you're going to need to set all this up. For the assembly, you're going to need a few tools. The first is a rafter square. You're going to need your Allen wrench, a socket wrench with a uh, eight millimeter socket, two screwdrivers, slot point and Phillips point, combination square, and then a standard square. So make sure you have all these available before you get started. I want to point out that during the entire installation and setup process, I leave this table saw unplugged and I'd recommend that you do the same. I know you're eager to plug it in and test it out, but uh, please wait until we've gone through the entire setup process. Also make sure you read, understand, and apply all the operational and safety instructions found in your manual and that you put on a set of eye protection and hearing protection every time you use this power tool. On the top of your saw is another set of operational and safety instructions, so make sure you read, understand, and apply these as well. This label happened to get torn up in the uh, shipping process, that's why it's all mangled here. So make sure you read, understand, and apply these instructions just like you're going to do with the manual. 
The next thing you want to do is unpack or remove the right hand extension, which is packed upside down on the saw like this. By releasing that latch right there, and you notice that panel is upside down, we're going to flip that over, and then unlatch that latch right there. And then what you're going to do, as I said a moment ago, you're going to flip it over and put it into both of those two slots and then close those two latches down. This is what it looks like installed correctly. So you notice you flip that panel over and you've locked down that latch right there. See how it's fit into that slot? And the same thing on the other side. So that's how you install the right hand extension panel. And while we have the table saw upside down, let's go ahead and install the little screw that becomes the stop for the fence control mechanism. So you have this short little screw, Phillips head uh, screw, and you're just going to put it into the end there, and you're going to tighten it all the way down. So that is the fence control mechanism stop on that side, and this is on the rod that's on the very back of the saw. I know you're eager to get this set up on the stand, so let's start looking at that. First thing you want to do is make sure that all these knobs are turned to the unlocked position on all four corners. So these are the two front ones and you've got two in the back. Make sure they're all pointed towards the unlocked position before you start this installation process or assembly for the stand. I've experimented with a couple of different ways to assemble the uh, quick stand and I found the easiest way to do it is to turn the saw upside down and take the two assembled legs and pop them into place opposite each other and then lock the knobs in place just like you see here. Now let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Let's take the assembled leg component and then lock it into place just like you did the front one. And you're going to have to push up on those little knobs to get them to seat correctly and to lock that into place. But make sure it's nice and firm when you're done. Now let's install the cross members. You'll notice there's a long rod and that goes at the top and then a short one that goes at the bottom. If you're not sure how these fit into place, take a look at either of the two pre-assembled uh, legs that you've already installed to see how they kind of crisscross or go back and forth between the two posts. Now let's take a closer look at how these cross members are put into place. So you see here this one's on the outside of the leg assembly and then this one's on the inside of the leg assembly. If we go over to the opposite side this one's on the outside and then again this one's on the inside. If you're not sure how this goes together Take a look at one of the sets of legs that came pre-assembled. Now that you've set your saw upright on the stand, I want to take a second look at the locking mechanism. So you can see right there it's locked into place on the left hand side and then again on the right hand side. You want to make sure these are all locked securely in place on all four corners before you do anything else. And of course all you have to do is unlock all four and the table saw just lifts right off the quick stand. Now let's get your bevel control knob installed. So there's a control knob with the nut and the washer. The washer will go on the outside of the dial. And you're going to need your slot point uh, screwdriver which I showed you earlier. And that's going to fit right there in that little hole again with the washer on the outside. This is what the knob looks like installed. Now you notice the washer in between the knob and the dial. And the knob should spin, but it shouldn't wobble. This is not tightened down all the way, so it should spin and not wobble. So make sure you tighten that down all the way. The next few steps are going to require the blade to be fully deployed. On the dial it shows you which direction to turn it, which is clockwise, to deploy the blade fully. So crank it all the way up until it stops.
Now let's look at how to change the angle or the bevel on the blade. First you want to release the bevel control lock, push it all the way over to 45 degrees, and then lock it back into place. And now you're at 45 degrees to the table. To reverse it, all you have to do is release the bevel control lock, bring it back over to zero degrees on the bevel control scale, and lock it into place. Now you're at zero degrees or 90 degrees to the tabletop. Let's go ahead and install the fence control gauge. So this is everything you're going to need for this step. And the little cap there goes on the end of the front fence control rod. And then there's the little gauge indicator. And the Phillips head screw you'll need, as well as the Phillips head screwdriver. And you're going to install that at the end of the front fence control rod. As you can see, I put that little cap on the end of the fence control rod. Now I'm taking the little gauge and putting it down through the slot in the scale and taking that longer screw and putting it through the hole right there. And then above that is another little slot. There's a little nub sticking out that you want to have that on there as well. Now when you tighten this down completely, don't tighten it all the way because you're going to need to adjust that here in just a little bit. So tighten it down, but leave just enough slack so that can be moved later on. Now you want to ensure that the fence control gauge is properly aligned. So you want to pull the extension out to 27 inches, and this should be right at about that location. And you want to make sure that both the front and rear extension bars are pulled all the way out. And the fence is set at 14 inches. And then take a straight edge or a tape measure and measure out 27 inches or whatever the exact measurement is. And that should be from the fence to the blade. And then come back and take a look at your fence control gauge. If it's not exactly on 27, you need to come underneath here, loosen that screw, adjust the gauge, and tighten it back down. And again, you want to make sure this is set at 14. So that's how you make sure the fence control gauge is adjusted correctly. You want to ensure that the fence control mechanism as well as the off-feed table mechanisms are working correctly. So you want to inspect all the scales and all the rods for, again, the fence control as well as the off-feed table. Your push stick can conveniently be stored on the right-hand side of your table. All you need is these last two black screws right here. And notice these are a little bit longer than those that you used with the quick stand. And they just go in those two holes. Make sure you don't tighten them down too much because then you won't be able to put the push stick on there. And of course, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for this. And this is what the push stick looks like when it's installed. And as I mentioned earlier, if you tighten those screws down too tight, then you won't be able to pop this in there. So you might have to adjust those a little bit to allow the push stick to be stored correctly. The onboard storage for your wrenches and fence are found on the right-hand side, just underneath the extension panel. Your miter gauge is conveniently stored on the left-hand side. And you can collapse your quick stand and attach it to the back of the saw using these two straps. You want to ensure that your work table has not been damaged or warped during shipping. So take a long straight edge and check from left to right in the back. And then do the same thing in the center. And of course, left to right on the front. Next, you want to use that same straight edge and check front to back on the left side. And of course, the center panel. 
the next panel over, and then finally on the extension. A number of years ago, I received a brand new saw and the blade was installed, but I found it was sloppy or loose. So from that point on, anytime I got a new saw, I always double check to make sure it was okay. So take a look at the arbor nut and make sure that's on correctly. Doesn't hurt to wiggle the blade itself to make sure it's nice and tight. Notice I have gloves on because these blades are sharp. Now we want to verify the gauge on the fence. So as you can see here, I've set it for 8 inches. You can set it for 8 inches or less. Lock it into place. Take your scale. Measure from the fence to the blade. And it should be 8 inches or whatever distance you selected. But it's got to be 8 inches or less. In this case, it's spot on. If you find you need to adjust, just take that little screw and adjust it till it agrees with your scale. Let's go ahead and check your bevel alignment. Setting your bevel control all the way to zero as far as you can push it. Lock it into place and then take the framing square that I showed you earlier. And then check between the teeth on the blade. Here you can see this one's just a little bit off. Your manual shows you how to adjust the bevel angle. Next, let's check uh, 45 degrees. And as you can see, it's a little bit off here as well. Again, reference your manual for how to adjust the bevel stops. It's important to check the alignment of the blade to the miter slot, and this is called the heel, H-E-E-L. Now, I'm not going to go into that here because it's a little bit of a lengthy process, but you can find the exact process step-by-step step in your manual. So make sure you check the heel of the blade. Now we want to start looking at the riving knife, and the first thing we want to do is raise the riving knife from the back position. So you see the little orange handle back there? You're going to reach down carefully, watching out for the blade, and then you're going to lift up on the riving knife. You may have to wiggle a little bit, and as you lift it up, you're going to feel it fall into a couple of posts till it's nice and stable, and then lock down the riving knife by throwing that little handle down. And then, of course, put your insert back into place. Now let's check the alignment of the riving knife to the blade. All you need is a little straight edge like you have here. Make sure that riving knife is in alignment with the blade. Now we know that it's already set at 90 degrees. So now you want to make sure the riving knife is set at 90 degrees just like the blade. And the adjustments for the riving knife are in the back. That also can be found in your manual. Now let's install the anti-kickback paws. All you need to do is to be able to squeeze this little plunger right here. And then that slot is going to fit directly over this slot right here in the riving knife and then push this down. So I'm going to do this twice. So squeeze that plunger, slide it down, and then push that little lever down. And then when you want to take it off, squeeze that plunger, and notice that lever pops up. So let me show that to you again. Squeeze the plunger, set it down, and then push that lever down, and it's locked into place. So that's installing the riving knife. Next, let's install the blade guard. So you see this little bar right here? That's going to slide into this little slot right there. So lift it up, slide it down into that slot, set it down, and pull that lever back into place. Now the guard should be touching the work table. So pull that lever up, lift it out. To reverse it, just put, it, put that bar back into that slot, let it sit down, and lock it into place. Now let's look at why it's important to have the riving knife in place. So as your workpiece comes forward, if there's any pressure for the workpiece to get caught on any of those teeth, which are spinning at 5,000 RPM, it's going to throw that workpiece back in your face, which you really don't want. But if that pressure occurs on the riving knife, it's not going to be caught by the teeth or less likely to be caught by the teeth. Or if for some reason your workpiece is shifting, it's still not going to bind against the blade. It's going to bind against the riving knife, which is what you want to have happen. 
The anti-kickback paws are another important safety feature. So as your workpiece comes in and comes underneath the uh, kickback paw, and notice I'm applying quite a bit of pressure here. It will not allow it to be kicked back into your face. Now these teeth may have a tendency to scratch your workpiece, so if you have a finished side, you might want to turn your workpiece over and cut it from the unfinished side so the kickback paws don't scratch it. Now let's see how all three of these safety features work together. Your workpiece slides underneath the blade guard protecting your fingers, comes in contact with the riving knife, and then finally the anti-kickback paws. So you really have three. You have the blade guard, riving knife, and anti-kickback paws. And you want to make sure every time you do a through cut, you have all three of these in place. If you're going to be plugging your table saw into an extension cord as opposed to directly into an outlet, you want to make sure you have a 12 gauge or better power cord or an extension cord to plug it into. Something that will handle the amperage because this is a 15 amp saw. So make sure you get a 12 gauge or better extension cord. And finally, let's look at uh, power switch operation with the yellow power key put into place. If you lift it up, it stays into place. If you have children in the house, you don't want them to have access to this power tool. Take the key out and hide it somewhere and it will not operate. It will not turn on. Plug it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Lift up and you're off and running. So that's the power switch operation. Well, I hope you got something useful out of this video. If you did, please press like and share with your friends. I placed the links to several of my other power tool videos in the description below, so make sure you check them out. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching, and as always, good luck on your projects.